dust up another dust up controversy with Star Wars, but of course there's two sides to every story and uh, the newest one is Kathleen Kennedy coming out saying that women in Star Wars struggle with toxicity due to the male dominated fan base. Meanwhile, you've got uh, some stories coming out about Carrie Fisher, how she had to be thin the entire time. That was mandated or at least pressured upon her which is what's really going on in this situation. Let's take a look. We're gonna start here with IGN. Storytelling does need to be representative of all people. And this is a, pretty much a follow-up to a video I already did where George Lucas rejected calls that Star Wars, that the ones he did were racist and misogynistic. And I still stand by all of that. George Lucas stands by that. And everything we have seen with Carrie Fisher stands by that. Carrie Fisher had a massive part to play in the way her character was portrayed. She would read the script, she would give her feedback, and that actually jumpstart a lot of other things that Carrie Fisher did in around Hollywood for movies back in that day and age where she would say, listen, let's change this up a little bit. Let's be a little bit more realistic and go with this different path. And now it's coming out, it seems that possibly there was a lot of pressure for Carrie Fisher to be thin. Now, Carrie Fisher did deal with a lot of mental health. She was <coughs> dealing with a lot of drugs uh, and a lot of other things behind the scenes. And uh, when she got onto the plane, that was fateful. She took off and she didn't land. Uh, she stayed up in the clouds. It, it, it was uh, it was not a good day for anyone that cared about anything to do with Star Wars. Luckily, I was able to uh, go to a panel and see her and get her signature before she passed away about six months prior to that. A very unfortunate time to uh, Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher had a lot of pressure on her to be thin for Star Wars before her death. Says friend James Blunt, she really put a lot of pressure on herself. And this is something I've seen bounced around a little bit. And it's kind of funny. This story came out at about the same time as the Kathleen Kennedy story coming out about how uh, women in Star Wars apparently struggle due to male dominated fan base two days after the Variety story came out. You wonder if they're trying to hide something that is going on here, if they're trying to flip the script. Lucasfilm's president, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, says women in Star Wars, such as the accolade showrunner Leslie Headland, struggled due to male-dominated fan base. I think a lot of women who step into Star Wars struggle with this a bit more. Despite this downside, Headland has made clear of her love of Star Wars in the past, saying it saved her life. And she also told IGN in March 2024, she's very proud to be the first woman to create, produce, direct, and show run a Star Wars series. Well, there's lots of rumors going around with Star Wars right now, and one of them is that George might come back and pick up the reins of this once beloved franchise. That's the one silver lining on a lot of this. People are taking the reins of these things. George Lucas, he, he sat there with the entire team. And if it wasn't for the entire team that was around him, if it wasn't for Carrie Fisher with him to be able to do things in Star Wars, to actually tell these stories, it wouldn't have been such a iconic telling of the stories where the newer ones like with Ryan Johnson walking in there and saying I'm telling my story and I don't care about the fandom I don't care what people have learned in the past and they're throwing it out the window they throw it all out and that's kind of the mentality that got put to the pressures on Carrie Fisher uh, musician James Blunt recently said at, at the Hay Festival in Wales that his close friend Carrie Fisher faced tremendous pressure to be thin for Star Wars when she reprised her iconic role as Princess Leia in Star Wars The Force Awakens. Fisher previously told Good Housekeeping UK in 2015, shortly before The Force Awakens opened in theaters, that she lost 35 pounds for the movie. She died one year later in December 2016 after going into cardiac arrest while flying from London to Los Angeles. She's been really mistreated 
her body and she re just got the job again of being Princess Leia in the new Star Wars movie, said Blunt at the Arts Festival. Where he was speaking about the, his memoir loosely based on a made up story. Blunt became friends with Carrie Fisher in the 2000s and even lived with her and her mother, the late Debbie Reynolds, uh, when he was recording his debut album, Back to Bedlam, in 2004. The album proved breakthrough for Blunt thanks to the success of singles such as You're Beautiful. Carrie was really on a high and I uh, positive, but they had applied a lot of pressure on her to be thin. Blunt said she spoke about the difficulties that women have in the industry, how men are allowed to grow old, and women are certainly not in film and TV. This is really unfortunate because this pressure came down from Disney and Star Wars, from the production company. This was the pressure. They, they, they would have approached her, they would have had her agent, they would have approached her and said, listen, we want you back in the movie, but we need you to lose some weight. And that pressure is absolutely horrific. No one should feel that they have to go through that. And it really does feel like that type of pressure is what led her to her untimely death. She really put a lot of pressure on her start, started using drugs again. And by the time that she got on the plane, she had effectively killed herself, Blunt added. They say it was heart failure of some kind, but she had taken enough drugs to have a really good party. Variety reached out to Lucasfilms, but the studio has no comment on the matter. According to the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office, Carrie Fisher had cocaine, methadone, ethanol, and opiates in her system at the time of her death. In her 2015 interview with Good Housekeeping, Fisher said the studio didn't want to hire all of me when it came time to being Princess Leia back to the big screen, only about three quarters she quipped about needed to lose the weight. And yet we have Kathleen Kennedy and uh, the showrunner saying that it's a male dominated space, saying it's the males that are doing that, that they're the ones saying that it has to be that the male dominance over the fandom have to see Carrie Fisher as a thin person. No, that's not true at all. The fandom loves Leia. The fandom loved Carrie Fisher. She was the Star Wars princess. She was the one that stood there, stood there and said back and would, would fight back and actually was someone that wanted more women's rights and actually fought for them and actually did the things that people sit there and try and pander to today. No one has an idea what Carrie went through. No one does. And it, it's really unfortunate that this is the dark path that we are now seeing lay out in front of us. Carrie Fisher, it comes out, all this story and all this stuff comes out about Carrie Fisher, but no, no, it's the fandom that's the problem. No, it's the industry that's the problem. The industry that's pressuring down on the problem saying oh all these males that are online they're the ones being toxic it's not the industry it's the standard it's absolutely pathetic and kathleen kennedy should be hanging her head in shame because of what's happened to carrie fisher the fact that this is 10 years almost 10 years later that we're talking about carrie fisher's death and now they're coming out saying that it's the male dominated fandom that it's the problem in star wars it's not, it's the way that they're telling stories. It's the way they're telling people that they have to do certain things. And it's absolutely not right. Well, Carrie Fisher had a lot to say with Star Wars. She had input in there. Unlike what's going on right now in the current Star Wars, where you have to produce something with those ESG scores. You have to promote the diversity of it. You have to have the representation. Representation has always been there in Star Wars. It always was and always will be. So this being front and center, it, it, it does nothing more than just make them, make them absolutely to be just the bad guys. Even though they're trying to be the good guys, they think they're being the good guys, but they're not. Anyway, I'm your Proud Canadian Phoenix Center Shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day, and don't forget to like and subscribe.